So I think what we should do is... Oh, greetings. Welcome back to the workshop. Following on from the last episode where we'd got the valve rod in and the valves and the buckle and I was going over this link at the end. I think we're going to skip modifying it for the time being and we're going to move on to the slide bar. We're going to get the slide bar done. Working our way down the cylinder. So uh, let's look at some material. Now these slide bars, they're made from this stuff. Ground flat stock or gauge plate which has been ground on the surfaces and usually it comes like this very nice very smooth very straight and then the other turned up like this which i don't know if you can see this but it's full of machine marks and those little black dots those were rust they arrived unground and rusty so i got hold of the supplier and i said excuse me that's uh, no good that's supposed to be ground and it's rusty we're very sorry about that we'll send you out another one brilliant do you want me to send the other one back no, brilliant, I thought we'll be able to use that for something in the future, just not intended for a slide bar. And then the other one arrived and it looked exactly the same. Unground and rusty, which resulted in me getting a refund. Yes, they both turned up rusty. So out of the three, I got one. So I thought I'd try a different supplier because I'm not risking getting a fourth one that was rusty and not ground. And here it is. As you can see, Still wrapped. This is from a company called, I think, Coventry Grinders. Let's have a little look. Looking good so far. Quite well packed. Now that is looking much more like it. It's so well wrapped, I can't get the sleeve off. Oh, there we are. There we are. Look at that. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So we now have two ground pieces. So that just goes to show that ordering online sometimes doesn't pay off. Being able to go in to a shop or a manufacturer or a supplier and be able to see what you're buying, sometimes it's better than the convenience of buying online. Right, let's get this cut. Oh, about, about there. Yeah, about there. Um, right. Karate chop! Ha! Ah, that should do it. Oh, look, I give myself eighth of an inch to trim off the ends to square up. Cool, I'm good. So I've got it in the milling machine and I've got my 10mm carbide cutter on. And uh, literally all we're doing is just going to clean that face up. Um, then I've got to drill a hole, flick it around. Well, I'll do both of them. I'll flick it around and then we'll machine it to length. A little bit more. Lovely jubbly. So now we can use that as the data edge for when I drill me hole. Which will be an 8mm. One minute, 37 seconds later. Um, I forgot to press record on the camera. Oops. Anyway, I found the centre and I went in 3 8 of an inch. And I've used the centre to get the hole started. Now it needs to be 8mm. So we'll do a small hole first. You know me, I love my small holes first. You were.
Right, that's that one done. So now that we have our hole in the end, we now need to get the length cut down. So we need to find the other end with the wobbler and uh, adjust the DRO and then move it to the end and machine this off. That is 10 inch. If you enjoy what you see on the channel, don't forget to hit that like button. We've got one, two. I think these have turned out all right. So our slide bar will uh, obviously go on here. Like so, using a stud. That screws into here. Then our slide bar just fits over the top. For now, we'll put a washer on and a nut. And our slide bar it's something like that now this is really coming together quite well i think you know it's beginning to look the part the biggest decision now that i've got to make is to decide which part am i going to do next we have the cross head which slides up and down here to do we have the piston that goes inside we have the piston rod and we also have the bracket here at the back to do and some glands so all that needs to be done so We'll start with one of those, shall we? These are the castings that we have, all the pieces left to get the cylinders completely finished off. Here we have the two crosshead castings. We have the two piston castings. And then those there are two pieces of 12 mil stainless rod, which should be long enough to do the piston rod, which goes from here into the front of here. They're all as involved as each other. I don't think there's any point us doing the rod just yet. So we're either gonna do these, or these.
So what we're doing here is we're trying to create a flat shelf so we can turn it round and stick it on the parallels. So that's now machined all the way across there. So I'll go across to the other side and do the other side. So they're exactly the same height. It's pretty consistent across the top of there, uh, which is why I had the parallel sat on that very edge corner there. And having those machined means we can sit, sit the parallels, or sit them on the parallel, like that. And we know that that's relatively straight. So we can sit those on here. Like so. And they are nice and flat. So now with the face mill, I can face that off and that will give us one datum edge. And then we will rotate it around and uh, get this back face here datumed and then I'll cut it in half. Have a loop. It's got a funny, funny pattern on it, but it's smooth. We need to machine this edge here now, which, if it's like the other one, it's rather square to start with, which is not bad. But the question is, is this end? Because this is the end we're going to have to... Yeah, that's, that's quite square. So, what we're going to do, DTI touched up on this face. And it's set at zero at the bottom. Coming to the top, and we're a little bit out. So... Try that. Little bit under.
And that'll do us. Looks good to me. Tighten that up. Right, I can face this edge off now. And we can be happy that this and this edge will be 90 degrees. Yep, that'll do us. Now, need to think about how to cut this down here. Now, looking in the wizard's engineering manual, if I use the wand, it will uh, it will cut this. So uh, let, let's give it a try. Uh, cut. Hmm. Not a lot happened there. Let's see what happens when we undo the clamp. It is magic. And it's even made marks like it was cut by a handsaw. Wow. So I've got both of these now to the same stage. Where we have two separate pieces, but we've got a datum edge here and a datum edge here and another one underneath. So I can now machine that top face down and I can machine that down and then get them bolted back together. I think what we should do is... <laughs> 